and welcome back to my channel apples and tiaras so today i wanted to share a video about how i film edit and post video lessons so if you're interested in learning how to film post and edit video lessons feel free to keep watching all right you guys so i think that it's really important for me to first of all just put a disclaimer in here i am an apple user I have a MacBook, I have an iMac, and I have Apple products, phones, watches, all of the stuff. If you're not an Apple user, this video may not be super helpful, but I do have some non-Apple user tips for you guys if you are not Apple users. So I film my video using two different systems. The first system that I use is iMovie. iMovie is a program that is usually pre-installed on most Apple products iPhones, iPads, MacBook computers, and iMacs. If you're using an Apple product and you don't have iMovie, you can absolutely download it and use it for yourself. iMovie is great because it comes with transitions, titles, and music of its own that you can use for your personal use without having to worry about copyright. For the majority of my video lessons, I use iMovie to film and edit videos. We are here on my MacBook computer, and I'm gonna show you just a couple of ways that you can screen record. So if you have the QuickTime Player app installed, you can double click on it and go to new screen recording. Since I'm actually screen recording right now, it's not gonna let me click on it. But once I click on that, you just follow the directions and it will begin your screen recording. You can also do a movie recording, which is going to film you using the webcam that is installed on your MacBook. Or if you have another webcam that you are able to connect, you can also use that. So that is how I screen record. Now we're going to talk about iMovie. So iMovie, like I said, is a program that should be pre-installed on your Apple computers, iPhones, and iPads. So if you don't have an Apple computer, but you have an iPad or an iPhone, you can absolutely use iMovie. You can film with your iPhone and then put the lessons together right there on iMovie on your phone. It is a little bit more uh, work because it's not using a mouse, it's just using your finger movements, but it would still work. So I'm gonna open up iMovie here and I have a lesson that is recorded already. So I'm just gonna kind of show you the steps on how I do that. So I have found these really cool YouTube videos. Like I said in my last video, Crash Course Science has been one of my favorite YouTube channels to use. And I'm not going to feel bad using other people's videos because they do such an amazing job of showing the kids great visuals, explaining to the kids in a, in a nice kid-friendly way. Whereas I would just have to repeat everything that these people already said. So I have been using other people's videos. Um, in my video lessons and that is totally allowed by my district so long as I embed myself somewhere in the video. So basically what I would do is to screen record or record myself on iMovie, I would go up to file, import media, and then the options are going to set are going to pop up. So right now you can see my face is being um, filmed in the webcam on my computer. Now my FaceTime uh, camera has been really laggy and you can kind of see that happening right now. So if I need to film using this, I will, but I have been just using my QuickTime camera and that has been working just fine. I can also film using my iPhone and just airdrop the footage to my MacBook and it will be just as good. Now if you have something filmed on a camera, you would just put your memory camera in here and it would pop up and you can just add that footage right in. So that's what happened here. I actually filmed the footage with my QuickTime camera and then I just imported, I actually literally clicked and dragged this footage in. So this is um, the footage right here. So I literally just click and drag it in and then it is in iMovie, which is super easy. I'm gonna delete it since it's already there. Now I do a screen recording of the YouTube video or the PBS media video or the Nat Geo Kids video any video that I find that I want to use, I just do a screen recording using QuickTime Player and then I save it to my desktop and then I click and drag it in just like I did with the other footage. So what I have right here is just um, the footage from that video that I found that I really wanted to use. I love this girl. She does a great job of explaining things to the student. So I just play the video. And then if I have the kids taking notes throughout that time, what I usually do is I put in the note taking footage and then I place it underneath here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that real quick. So I'm just gonna pretend that this video right here is my note taking and I'm gonna put myself above it. 
So if I want to do a cutout, like let's say I want the video to be playing as a cutout, I would come up here to this button. I would click picture in picture. And then I, I put the picture of the video up in the corner and then the video of me taking notes would be underneath it. So the kids are still able to see the video, but they're also watching me take notes live. And you can edit this like to where the picture goes away for a while and then comes back. So let's say I want full screen on my notes and then I want the video to come back in the video. <laughs> video, video, video. So that is one way that you can do that. I've also been doing it where I've been taking a picture of the notes that I took and sending it to the kids on Google Classroom and that seems to work really well too because the kids can zoom in and out of the photo instead of trying to keep up on the video. So that's been really helpful. So then when I'm done filming, like let's say here's my intro, I talk about how I want the kids to take their notebooks out, I talk about the learning target for the lesson, um, I show them that they're going to need their science books, they're going to be taking notes, and then at the very end of the video I usually have a closing, so it's where I talk about the assignment that they're going to do. So let's just pretend that this footage right here, again, is the outro where I talk about. So now you're going to go to Google Classroom, you're going to click on this button, Let's say it's a Google form. You're going to complete the Google form and then please make sure that you copy your notes in your notebooks. Your notes will be very helpful in completing the quiz on Friday. Blah, blah, blah. Whatever it is that I want them to do. So then when I'm finished with this, now, okay, because of YouTube copyright, if I want to share this video, I'm going to have to download it as a file to my desktop, then upload it into Google Classroom. But if I didn't use someone else's video, I would upload it straight to YouTube and then put the YouTube link in my student's Google Classroom. So that is how I use iMovie to film my video lessons. Okay, so that was how I use iMovie to record, film, and upload video lessons. So now I'm gonna move into showing you guys how to use Loom to do the same thing. Loom is a little bit faster of a process because it films your face over the screen you wanna share. The only thing with Loom is that you cannot really edit things. You can cut and trim some of the footage, but I find that it's a lot easier to edit. Okay, so my rude camera cut me off, but I was saying that in Loom you can film um, and then you can trim things out, but I find that it's easier to film and edit things out using iMovie. Okay, everyone, so I am here on the Loom homepage and Loom is really cool. You can kind of see some of the videos that I have already filmed and placed in Loom. And this is kind of what they look like. They are a screen recording and then your face is actually in there. So I'm gonna go and click to new video. And then you guys are gonna see me pop up here in the screen. Now Loom is really cool because you can adjust the camera. I believe you can adjust um, the shape of your um, face. Um, you can also adjust how big or how small your face appears on the screen. So if I wanted to minimize myself in the screen, I could just make it smaller and scoot it over. Um, I could also make it really big. So what I generally do is I make my face as big as possible for the beginning of the lesson where I introduce the learning target or objective. I talk about what we're going to do for the day. Just like I normally would in a lesson live, I would share the agenda, I would share uh, the learning target, and then of course the end result. So this is kind of how I would begin. You can either um, share your current tab, which is over here, or you can do your full desktop. You can share your screen only, or you can do a camera only. So if you're not gonna be using anything that you wanna show the kids, you could definitely just do camera only, and that's it. Um, so I'm actually gonna do my full desktop because I wanna show the kids this video. So I have the video in a separate tab. It's open right over here, and I just am really quickly going to um, film that video. So. I'm going to do like a test run for you guys. I'm not going to actually film the video, but I will just show you. So I'm going to hit start recording. It's going to ask me if I want to share the full screen. I say yes. And then, of course, we have a countdown. Hey, all you cool cats and kiddos, and welcome to another. Here I go. I'm just going to walk you guys through it. Today's learning target is I can tell how the four.
like do a quick refresher, like hit that prior knowledge. So, so then I would go on to instructing my students on where to go back in through Google Classroom, where to find the picture of their notes that they need to copy into their notebooks. My screen would come back up and I would be filming the outro of all of this. So when you're finished recording, you just click the green check mark and then your shareable link will come up. You can edit the title of the video and then you just copy that link to the right there and then share it with your students on Google Classroom. So once all of my video footage has been filmed and uploaded, I then put it all into a Google Classroom button, whether I use the assignment button, a material button, or a quiz button. I try to put everything that my students need to do in one day in one space so that I can put a little to-do list in the instructions and they know exactly what to do and everything is right there for them. So that is how I film, edit, and upload my video lessons. I hope that this was a helpful video for you. I don't really have a special setup at school for filming videos. I literally just sit at my desk or my table and I film. I don't have a ring light that I take with me, although I could take it with me, but I just don't. Um, I haven't really invested in that yet. I might, I haven't done it yet. I haven't really found that it has been necessary yet. I usually find like a window to sit in front of and use the natural light in my classroom. But of course, if you're filming from home, you can definitely have a different setup than I have. I hope this video was helpful and informational. And of course, if you guys have any questions or need any help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you guys wanna see more teaching related videos. Please put your suggestions in the comments as well. I would love to be able to film things that you guys are looking for or wanting to see. Uh, don't forget to follow me on Instagram at Apples and Tiaras, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.